feel him on the inside of your being and your spirit. You couldn't just hear somebody say he was alive and know he was alive. He got in his people by the Holy Ghost. That's what resurrection's all about. The Holy Ghost is the resurrected spirit of Jesus Christ. And he's moved in and took over. Hallelujah. He's sitting on a throne this morning. Oh, he's reigning. He's ruling. Can you just worship him this morning? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, because he lived.
sign of God's creation is that everywhere you look, there's life. You can look at the trees, you can look in the yard, you can look at the water, you can look in the sky. Any direction you turn, you'll see life on this earth. Because that's God's original design, is life. Everything He touches lives. Everywhere this river shall flow, it'll bring life unto anything that it touches. You'll have things in you made alive just because you're present in this house this morning little things way down there little seeds that you that has been planted for years god's gonna water some things today and i'll tell you what you may be driving down the road in your automobile and all of a sudden the river will break loose on the inside of you and god will let you know he's quickening something on the inside of you i submit to you today that there are probably at least 50 years worth of prophetic words that are sitting before me in this house today and some of them are way overdue for the coming to pass but I believe God can hit that seed with resurrection power this morning and that suddenly it will come alive faith in your heart again to know that if God has said it he shall perform it if he has spoken it he shall make it good there are no idle words in God's mouth every word that proceeds out of him is a yea and an amen Amen. Hallelujah. There is not a nay. There's not a maybe. It's not an if. It is a for sure word from God that will bring forth the harvest. Amen. Hallelujah. At one time, uh, one time, Brother Wallace Heflin got a word from God that he was going, God was going to use him to minister to an Amish development that was in that area. And he passed away and somebody came to his sister at the funeral and said, I'm so sorry that Brother Heflin didn't get to fulfill the, the promise. She said, don't be sorry. God will bring to pass whatever he has spoken. A few years later, a woman was called to go minister to them. And while she was ministering to them, she got in one of their carriages to ride. And there sitting in the middle of the seat in the carriage was Brother Wallace Heflin's book, How to Hear the Voice of God. She said she nearly jumped out of that carriage and shouted right there in the road, you can be seated, amen. Because that, that, that the prophecy had come to pass even, even years after he was dead, if so to speak, in the natural. But Hebrews said, he being dead, yet speaketh. Yet speaketh. And I can tell you today that God's got everybody in here covered with an assurance, with a mercy covering, a blood covering, a glory covering. I'll tell you something further than that, deeper than that. Every one of you has got something on the inside of you that the Holy Ghost knows how to touch. And if he touches it, I, every prison cell will open, every bondage will break, everything that's wrong will get right. God will start moving. The Holy Ghost will start turning. The river will start flowing. It's God's designed order that he bring everything into life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything into life. Hallelujah. Raise your hands one more time and just praise him today for his glory. Oh, how he loves you. And me Oh how He loves you And me He gave His life What more Could He Ooh. Mm -hmm. 
the blood, it is our victory.
if you'd be so kind to get your tithes and offerings ready to bring to the Lord today. We are so thrilled to see all of you in this service, and I feel the wonderful presence of Jesus, the anointing of God. Hallelujah. I don't like to just uh, uh, go with the mold. I like the Holy Ghost to take over. Amen. I like when the Spirit of God has His way, and I thank God I feel His touch here in this meeting today. I thank God already for the prophetic word of the Lord that has spoken. Amen. And I thank Him for what He's doing in every one of you. Amen. If you'd be so kind to stand as you get your offering ready. Amen. We're going to make a confession of faith as we bring it to the Lord this morning. And uh, being as, as we've got so many visitors here today, probably be best if I say it and then you repeat it. Everybody together. This is my seed. God gave it to me. I'm now reinvested into His great kingdom for the working of the ministry. And I expectingly await a return harvest in every area of my life. God bless you today, folks. Bring it to the Lord. Amen.
wonderful God. When I lift my head, He lifts my heart. When my heart gets lifted, I cannot stay in that low, dark, dreary, burdened place. Can you say amen? Why? Because the river flows. The Spirit comes on the scene. I'll tell you now, folks, laughter doeth good like a medicine. But a broken spirit, I said a broken spirit will dry up your bones. You sit around a pouting and scowling, mully grubbing all the time, and everything you got will run out of your life just like a drain plug's been pulled. But if you get the joy of the Lord on the inside of you, I want to tell you now, folks, it's a privilege to serve Him. It's a joy to serve Him. His commandments are not grievous. It's the way of the transgressors that's hard. This thing, this life is the glory life. This is the joy life. Amen. And we are so thankful for the joy of the Lord. Praise God forever. Amen. Amen. Well, you lady ministers got more to say this morning. Sister Shirley, you got a word to tell us. Amen. I just want to say one thing. Go right ahead. We were talking about the joy. Yes. And, well, I think it was Friday. I went in the bathroom to brush my teeth. You know, we think of God speaking when we're in prayer or in church. Or, or right, church. right. But God spoke to my heart that one all right all right and I thought about that scripture that I quoted in that prophecy this yes morning, yes yes said, yes we can't give him joy if we're all down short come on now and, and, you know, yes yes he wants our joy as much as we want yes he amen amen amen, amen. amen. Verse 12 through 12. 
whatever. We'll start in 12, see what we go to. Amen. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose, rose from the dead, how say some of you there is no resurrection? Now, the Sadducees didn't believe in the supernatural. They didn't believe in supernatural. They didn't believe in the resurrection. And they didn't believe in angels. They, they didn't believe in anything supernatural. The Greeks only believed in philosophy. Hello. And the Pharisees only believed in traditions. Well, glory. And Jesus come along with <laughs> brought an end to all three. Can you say amen? He overrode religion. And he overrode traditions. And he overrode philosophy. And he overrode all that dead dry, no supernatural bunch that didn't even believe in angels. Amen. How many of you believe in angels this morning? Amen. And so the Bible says that if, 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 if he preached that Christ rose from the dead, how say some of you there's no resurrection? If there be no resurrection of the dead, Christ is not risen. Amen. And, and if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain. And your faith is vain. And yea, we are found false witnesses. Come on now, of God. If we don't have the supernatural power of the resurrection of the Holy Ghost working in our midst, then we're false witnesses of, of this power of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he said, because we testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise down. In other words, Paul said, you can't talk it and not believe it. You can't preach resurrection without preaching Jesus in power. And, and not only that, without preaching your own resurrection. Amen. Amen. Because I live, he said, ye shall live also. When we talk about resurrection, we're not just talking about one man. We're talking about one man of starting it. But there's a whole, hallelujah, there's a whole host and a whole harvest of people that have come in to this resurrection power and this glory. They're called born again. They're called saints of God. They're called the called out ones. They're the chosen ones. They're the redeemed ones. You can't be redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and of gold, but with the incorruptible seed of the living God. Amen. And so he said, oh man, you just take off, but he said if Christ right, raised if the dead raised not, Christ is not raised. If Christ is not raised, your faith is in vain and you're yet in your sins. Then they which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. That's right. There's no hope for your loved ones who passed into His courts and His glory. You'd have to say they was dead, lifeless. I got news for you. They're not dead or lifeless. Well, glory to God. I got another news for you. They're not in the dirt. And they're not in the grave. And they're not in the ground. Come on, somebody. They just stepped over into another dimension. Into another realm called the glory world. The heaven world. Hallelujah. Amen. And so he says that uh, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we have all been most miserable. But now is Christ risen and become the what? First fruits. First fruits. First fruits of who? Of them that slept? Yes, sir. He didn't just die presently. He died past, present, and future. When he died, he went back and preached this gospel all the way to Adam and every man that had died. He resurrected them and brought them life and breathed on them the breath of life. Come somebody say amen. Oh, hallelujah. 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 I might just as well leave that. And, and I've read enough out now. You know I'm in the Word. And uh, I got the Word in here and it's more alive than the Word that's just in the books. And you, I've read enough to establish your faith, haven't I? And tell you that if Christ is not raised, you have not rose. If Christ is not alive, I'm not alive. If He had not breathed, then I've never breathed. If He never lived, then I never lived. If He's not alive, I'm not alive. But if He's living, ain't the one thing I can be. And that's alive. Hallelujah. Because He said, I passed by you. And you was bleeding to death. And you were dying on that road. And you were polluted in your own blood. And then I said unto thee, live. Yea, I said unto thee, when thou wast in thy blood, live. And when I passed by thee, there was none to suffer. 
for thee and none had sought at thee and thy navel cord was not cut you were still laying there bleeding to death died in Adam but he said when I passed by you it was a time of love and I spread my garment over you and I suffered you in my arm and I sawed your wound hey glory to God he found me bleeding and died on the Jericho road and he poured in the oil and the wine if he didn't heal, then I can't heal. But if he healed, I can. If he didn't preach, I could never preach. But if he ever preached, then I'm anointed to preach. Because I live, ye shall live. Paul went on to talk about the people we, we have to plant by way of the earth. He went on to tell us not to ever be deceived. That anything God touches and raises up, We'll know no corruption. Well, glory to God. I said it'll know no corruption. And he tells us quite frankly that a seed can't be quickened except it first dies. And then when he raises it up, it, he raises it not up in the body that you planted. But he giveth unto every seed. Well, glory to God. His own body. Hallelujah. And you need not think in a million years that that sick, diseased, I don't know about you, but I've planted some pretty rough looking scenarios in that earth. That's the truth. They had disease. They couldn't walk. They couldn't talk. They were sick when they died. And if you think for one minute, that's the body, glory to God, that he's bringing up, you got another thing coming. That body belongs in the earth. It's going back of the dust from which it came. But God gave it unto to ever see its own body. And it's not a mortal body. It's an immortal body. It's not. Well, glory to God. Paul even said that all flesh is not the same. There's the flesh of a human. There's the flesh of a bird. And there's the flesh of a beast. Then he says the glory is not even the same. There's the glory of the sun and the glory of the moon. Oh, there's glory of celestial body. But there is a celestial glory that is not mortal. Hallelujah. And so we, we've got to know what the other scripture I'm going to read to you in Psalm 16 where David closed that out by saying, Hallelujah. Thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Hell there means a grave. Thou wilt not leave my soul in hell nor suffer thy holy one to what? See corruption. And when we go back in that New Testament, we find that from the early beginnings of the Word, there was a prophetic seed concerning resurrection. Joey. My boy, this morning I got to go running through these and got so blessed. Joseph, when he was dying, prophesied and said, Don't you bury me in Egypt. Take my bones and put them somewhere to keep them. Why? Because there's going to be a deliverance around here. There's going to be a coming out. And when y'all go out, I'm going out. I'm giving you a prophetic word and telling you don't bury me in this land because we're not going to stay here forever. Somebody say praise the Lord. I read in the word where when the double portion prophet was had done laid in the earth until he didn't have no flesh on his bones. No sinew, no tissue, no nothing. All that was left was just what the Bible calls the bones of the prophet. But there was enough power and residue and glory and anointing left over in them bones. Well, praise the Lord. I feel it this morning. That when the enemy came in and the Moabites invaded the land and two brothers was had another soldier brother in their arms that had been killed in battle and they were trying to take him and give him a proper burial. But when they heard the band of Moabites coming, it frightened them. And so they tossed him over their shoulder and kept on running. They didn't know. They tossed him into the grave of the bones of the old prophet. And the Bible said when that dead corn hit the bones of that old man. He stood upright again on his feet and began to live. Hallelujah! That was a prophetic tone of resurrection power. He stood up on his feet. God 
said Ezekiel down in the middle of a valley and said, Lo, there were very many, and lo, they were very dry. He said there was no order there. It was chaotic. There was no bone in order, no skeleton in alignment. Everything was scattered and smitten and strode, and it was dried up. Years and years of death had been through that valley. He wasn't in a natural valley somewhere in Israel. He was in the spirit when he seen that. God was just as showing him that it didn't matter how dead or scattered or bad or rough or de and depleted and, and desecrated it looked. If the word of God gets in the middle of that thing, if the breath of God blows on it, it doesn't matter how bad it looks. Uh, there is a order and a shaking and a coming together. Everybody said, well, you have to yell, yep, I do. I feel it down here and I've got to get it out. Hallelujah. That's the way I preach. If you come back next Sunday, I'll yell just like I'm yelling today. I can't change that. Hallelujah. They might try to put me in the valley of bones. If I get too quiet, they'll think I'm dead. Amen. The Lord said He fell in the midst of it. Some of you right now have been set down in the midst of chaos, confusion, trouble. And you think you're there because you're being attacked. That's right. And the Holy Ghost would have you know this morning you're there because the word of the Lord Amen. is getting ready to come upon your mouth. Amen. And you Amen. by the faith of God are going to speak a prophetic Amen. word of resurrection Amen. into that situation. Amen. And the Lord asked Ezekiel, can they live? Amen. And if God ever asked you a question, he's not wanting you to answer him. He's already got the answer. He said, can they live? And Ezekiel was smart enough to answer him right. Oh, Lord God, you know if they live or not. You know what his next word was? Prophesy. 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 Everything that began in God, including you, began as a prophetic word. Hallelujah. You was a word before you was anything. You was a word in God. Hallelujah. And Ezekiel said he prophesied as he was commanded. And said, oh, you bones, hear the word of the Lord. Yeah, yeah, and he yeah. said, suddenly there was a great noise. I'm going to tell you what we need right now in the body of Christ. We need to hear a heavenly noise, a sound. And then after they heard that sound, there was a great shaking. The word of God tells us he'll shake not only the earth, but he'll get ready to shake the heavens as well. And every power is going to be shook. Hallelujah to God. So I said, oh, we better hop, do. You better get in the middle of it. That's a good shaking. When God begins to shake the heavens, that means He's going to stir up gifts and stir up prophecies and stir up the supernatural. Lord, have mercy. Stir up all of the talents and the gifts and the callings of God that are without repentance. God is getting ready to resurrect. Amen. Those things that you think have left you alone and you've escaped them and you won't have to fulfill them. Oh yeah, you will. There's coming a great noise and a great shaking and you're going to want to sing again. You're going to want to shout again. You're going to want to laugh again. You're going to want to preach again. You're going to want to prophesy again because God is stirring up something. Within you. Amen. And so that's just that's just good. Then we have another one in Isaiah. That book of Isaiah, he began to prophesy and says, Thy dead body, thy dead men rather, shall live again. Together with my dead body shall they walk rise. All that was was prophetic overtone of a coming resurrection that would not just affect one man but would affect a whole people. Yes, sir. Amen. That's called a new creation race. Yes. That experienced a new birth in God because the new birth itself is the beginnings of a re resurrection in your life. Yes, sir. When you were dead in your trespasses yes. and sins, yes. He quickens you. Yes. Not only did He quicken, quicken means made alive, He done more than that. He raised you up. Yes. Not only He raised you up, He made you to sit together with Him yes. in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. My granddad could preach on Isaiah's revelation of Jesus. Probably greater than any man I ever heard preach on. He had a classic sermon called The Eyes of Isaiah. How many remember him preaching that sermon? 
and he'd start from the beginning and go to the end, brother, and he could tell you chapter and verse. And I don't mean just quote them, I mean tell you the references of them, of every place where Isaiah saw the coming prince of peace who would break the staff of wickedness in this land and would deliver the people and set them free. But his greatest and highest uh, a vision came to him in the 53rd chapter when he said he is a man acquainted with grief and with sorrow. There's no beauty in him. Oh, Lord. I said, there's no beauty in him that we should desire him. We can't even look upon him. Isaiah said, we hid as it were our faces from him in shame. Can you say amen? He said he led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shearers dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was despised and rejected among men. Yet we esteemed him stricken and smitten by God. But the Lord hath laid upon him. All we like sheep have gone astray. But the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Therefore he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Somebody say amen. And the Bible said that God said began to prophesy about it. He said, look at him. He said, he's a seed. They began to cry out. They said, uh, uh, he's made his living and made his uh, a great with the rich and he's a man acquainted with grief and sorrow said he's dying and how shall he prolong his seed? Who's going to see his generation? Who's going to declare that was us? If he dies, how will he ever reproduce himself in the people? But wait a minute. The vision went on. And when the vision went on, Isaiah said, wait a minute. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. Now I want to clear up one more thing right there and tell you quickly that Jesus was not killed. He was not murdered. Folks, if he has got to be a willing sacrifice. If his life was took from him, then he ain't no willing sacrifice. And that's a lie that Hollywood has sold in the movie productions to sell another ticket. I'm telling you now, he said in John 10, no man taketh my life from me. I lay it down of my own accord. And if I lay it down, I've got power. Somebody say amen. I've got power to do what? Take it back up again. Which brings us back to the fault of anything he touches will not be raised corruptible. It will put on incorruption. How? Because if Jesus dies like any other descendant of Adam, he won't come out of that grave. But he was not just a man. There was a God on the inside of that man. He was not just natural. He was supernatural. He was not earthly only. He was both heaven and earth dwelling under the same tent. He was more more than a man, a hundred percent man and a hundred percent God. He wasn't half God and half man. He was all God and all man. He wasn't second to none. He was God in the flesh. Well, glory to God. He doesn't have membership. He is the membership. He's the first and the last. He's Alpha and Omega. He's beginning at him. Make him anything else is to deny the Godhead and stomp on the deity. He's God in the flesh. He's God incarnate. He's God personified. He's the express image. He's the express image of his person. Hallelujah. And if you don't understand that, you just need a little revelation to work in your life. Philip said. Uh, why don't you show us the Father and it'll suffice us. Jesus said, if you've been with me so long and you know me not, if you've seen me, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Let me tell you something about Father. He ain't flesh. He ain't human. Come on now. He's spirit. God is a spirit. Come on now. But God who is a spirit had to get into this world yes. and this realm yes. to redeem us. Yes. 
yes. from destruction. Yes. I'll clear up another thing that I felt led the Lord would have me address. God cannot die, Amen. never has died, never will die. The part of Jesus that died was the earthly flesh, the earthly body. His spirit did not die. Well, glory. And he did not need to be born again. He was a son of the most high God. He was sinless, faultless, and perfect. That's erroneous doctrine. You could have turned your television on this morning and get last evening and heard about a multitude of them say that Jesus went to hell as a sinner. Come on now. And died spiritually and had to be born again. I'm telling you now, there wasn't no sin in him. There wasn't no fault in him. If he had died like any other old uh, human being, it never would have been a resurrection. But he had something in him that couldn't die. I wish some of you believed you had something in you this morning. I said, I wish some of you believed you had something in you. And that, that, that you get you, you I'm gonna watch it time. You just shout and I'll cut off when it's time. You don't have to worry about, about what time now. I know when it's time to quit. Amen. Don't let that hinder you from getting happy this morning. So keep on keep a watch on it. Amen. Oh yes, if he can't be all natural. If he's all natural, if he's what we are, come on now, because we come through the vehicle of Adam to get into this earth. We was not, uh, we were not called sinners just because of our deeds we've done. We're called that because we came through a falling lamb. Lord have mercy to get into this earth. And it ain't our fault. Even them who have not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Hallelujah. The fact is everybody was lost and everybody needed a Savior. They needed to be what? Reconciled back to God. And the Bible teaches us that God was in Christ reconciling His world unto Himself. Amen to God. Jesus said to Pilate, there could no power be given unto you except it were given you of my Father which is in heaven. Pilate's wife had a horrid dream. She knew he was a son of God. She came out begging her own husband not to have no dealings with that situation because she dreamed of him. She seen how virtuous, how pure, how holy, how righteous he really was. But Pilate said, I've already ready to wash my hands. I've already and, 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 and Jesus went before the, the before he ever went before Pilate, he went before the magistrate, the high priest board of the church. If you, you know what that high priest done? He 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 gave up the priesthood. His name was Caiaphas. He asked Jesus if, if he was a son of Jesus. So finally looked at him and said, I that speak unto thee am he. And when he said that, Caiaphas grabbed his garment and rent it in twain. And the Bible teaches us in the Old Testament that if a high priest rents his garment, that, that seamless robe, that he gives up the priesthood. And he had to wait for Caiaphas to give up the garment because Jesus was the great high priest of my profession. Can you say amen? He didn't go in by the blood of bull or goats or rams or doves, but by his own precious blood at the end into the holy of all once and for all and by his offering and he perfected forever him that are sanctified he purged our conscience from dead works that we could serve the living God he didn't go in as a lamb he didn't go in as a, as a bull he didn't go in as a he went in as a sinless spotless perfect are you hearing me he wasn't slain at Calvary that done that he was slain Prophetically, he was slain before the foundation of the world. John, you lived in, we found somebody worthy who can open up the mysteries of God. He turned and saw a lamb as it were, but he turned back, and that time the one that was the lamb had become a lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. God's own design. God's resurrection order. He was more than a man. He did not. He wasn't killed. And he didn't have to be born again. He was God. He never died. 
just a few days before he willingly laid down that flesh that he took on. He interceded so deeply in a place called Gethsemane, which means the olive press. And when you really get in an intercession, it'll press the oil. It'll, <coughs> it'll press the olive till the oil starts to run and a new anointing starts to flow. He went into Gethsemane to intercede. He was not praying for himself. He was praying for us. You can't intercede for yourself. You can only intercede for another. When I was a child, I used to hear that preached as if in the last 10 minutes, Jesus almost changed his mind and backed out of the deal. They'd say he was so weak he almost couldn't do it. Folks, if that's the truth, then we base the whole plan of salvation on somebody who almost decided at the last minute that he didn't have enough power to do what he came to do. No, read your Bibles. Jesus got to one place and said, What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, for this cause came I into the earth. And then the Bible said, Jesus told him, I could call 10,000 upon 10. Glory to God, he got my whole shot. All I have to do is say the word, and then deliver me. I instantly just, just, just disappear. I go back into the glory that I came from. Hallelujah. But he said, Why should I do that? I'm right on time. I'm right on time. I'm right on purpose. I'm here for what I'm here for. Hey, glory to God. Amen. And he walked into that garden. And brother, it wasn't him crying. It wasn't him crying out. It was a people crying out through him. He was interceding. I want you to know death had ruled and had reigned and had held him in prison. And now they were crying out. He could feel their burden as they cried. Get this cup from us. Pass it from us. Deliver us from death. Oh, my God. Take away this prison that has held us so long. The Bible said in Hebrews 2, he offered prayer and supplication unto God with strong crying and with tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard. Hallelujah. He prayed it through. And when he prayed it through, he went. And bless God, I don't know, there's no way to tell all this in one sermon, but you just have to pick what you feel the Lord would have you say and, and say it. But uh, the truth is that... Uh, when they, when they placed him in the tomb, sealed the tomb. And, and Mary, before he ever went to the tomb, anointed him for his burial. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. You don't generally anoint people while they're alive. They usually save that to preserve the body after his death to keep the corruption from happening so fast. But it's okay to do that to Jesus because... They couldn't no corruption touch him. So, praise the Lord. Can you imagine if he got anointed that heavily the night before and began to sweat the next day till blood come out? Can you imagine how beautiful the smell was? It filled that garden as he sweated in that precious spider and that holy myrrh. And all that frankness. And every one of you, if you just get in that sweaty prayer, if you just get in that heavy intercession, you find out you've already been anointed to go through this. God's already strengthened and stabilized you and you coming out on top and you're going to come out in victory. Amen. Amen. But I'll close with this this aspect. Uh, this verse hit me too so hard this morning. In, in, in Acts the first chapter when Luke was writing to Theophilus and he said these former treaties I write unto thee, O Theophilus. But he gets down about the fourth verse. Acts 1 and 4 says that Jesus showed himself alive after his passion. And I like this line right here. By many infallible proofs. By many infallible proofs. Of course, he's referring to the fact that after Jesus rose from the dead, he walked this earth in a glorified body for 40 days and nights. The first one to meet him and greet him was Mary and didn't know him because he rose in another realm and in another, uh, another dimension. You go read your Bible. Anybody that saw Jesus after he rose from the dead had to have a revelation to know who he was. She thought he was a gardener. Perhaps he was. He's a mighty good gardener. He pulled up the thorn of the curse. He started his thing in a garden. He told that song of Solomon Bride she was a gardener. 
in the place where he crucified, there was a garden. Yes, and there he was buried in a garden too. Yes. Maybe he wanted to get it across to you that there's a beautiful walk in God that's been regained and reestablished. Hallelujah. And so the Bible said she, he said she, uh, he called her by name. She knew him then. Because when he called her name before seven devils, left her. And if you ever hear anybody talk in a voice that'll make seven devils leave you, I guarantee you, you'll never forget that voice again. <laughs> never, never, never. Then you say amen. He called out her name and she said, Rabbi, I'm our master teacher. And then, then she felt that her feet was going, felt his feet was going to hold him. Remember that? And Jesus said, touch me not. And he didn't mean, don't put your hands on me. Read it in the, in the original language. He said, don't detain me. Don't hold me here. Why? He said, because I'm on my way. To do, what are you doing? He said, well, I got blood. I, I'm, I'm going to offer it. I'm going to pour it out on the mercy seat. He said, well, let me let you in on something. He said, when I get through with this, you'll be in the family. Because I'm going to ascend unto your father. He had never said that before to nobody. Your father and my father. He say amen. Yeah. The next time they seen him and said Jesus he thought he was a spirit, he was not a spirit. He was a body. He had a glorified body. He said, handle me. A spirit hath not flesh and bone. He didn't say blood. He poured all his blood out yeah. on the mercy seat. Can you say amen? amen? Well, I've got me happy this morning. I, I, I got to close this thing. He said, that, that, and then the two men in the mess was walking with her account. Their, their, their countenance dropped to the ground. And they were sad. And they didn't know. And Jesus just joined up with them like he was a stranger. And started walking. I'm going to tell you something about his glorified body. He'd go through walls and windows. He'd go through locked doors. And then when they all thought he was so spooky, they didn't know what he was, he'd turn around and say, give me some fish and honey call. And he ate it. So bless your heart, all them ghostly movies with them wispy wind running around. That ain't what he's like. There's a body. There's a glorified body. Hey! It'll never know pain. It'll never know sorrow. It'll never know sickness. It'll never know death. It won't swell. It won't wear out. It won't get tired. And it's not down to moving by speed, motion, and miles and distance. It just moves by thought pattern. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the truth. Amen. They'll move by thought patterns. They'll move by translation. Yeah. And Philip done that in the natural Amen. body. Amen. Amen. He left the river and was seen in his oldest preaching to God. 50, glory to God. 15 miles or so down the road. Wow. He just translated over there by the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now that's how close you can get yes. to the glory of God now if you Amen. want to pay the price and walk in it. And then he said that, that those men... Uh, he said, why are you so sad and why is your countenance falling? They said, are thou a stranger in Israel? Do you not know? And they began to try to tell him about him. Mm -hmm. And when they got through, he told them something. <laughs> the Bible said he opened the word to them. Glory. He went all the way back to Moses' tabernacle and preached from the mercy seat right up to that current hour. And told them in no uncertain terms that this is nothing but a fulfillment of that which was prophesied by the yeah, prophet, yeah. to which he made it though he would have went on. But they said, Turn aside with us and come into our house and when they and, and, and eat bread with us, and he set them down at the table and he gave them the bread. And the Bible said he took the bread, blessed the bread, break the bread, and they were known, and then he made himself known unto them. In the breaking of the bread, they said, Did not our hearts burn with us when he spoke to us? Amen. Now that's where I'll end it today, but I will tell you now every time you come into this place, and every time the revelation of His Word is broken unto you, your heart ought to burn. I said your heart ought to burn. You ought to feel something taking place on the inside of you. And the reason you feel that is because you've been quickened and resurrected. And I can tell you now, folks, you don't have to worry about you. You don't have to worry about your loved ones. It's passed over. You don't have to worry about none of that. God's got all of them under control because there's been a resurrection. Things don't stay dead no more. Somebody say praise the Lord. They only pass. 
from one direction to another direction, from one realm to another realm. You don't sow that body that shall be. But it shall by chance what? Bear grain. I don't sow one apple seed and expect one apple to grow. I expect a whole tree of them. Jesus rose, and because he rose, we rose with him. And now today, God's filling this earth with a whole host of people who are born again by the Spirit of God. And the, and, and the, and the wonderful thing about it is the, the greatest infallible proof he gave them, glory to God, he come back on the 50th day called Pentecost. He come to the upper room and he that was with them got in them. And when he got in them, he made them alive from the inside out. And he filled them with the Holy Ghost. And I tell you now, any environment that's not spirit-filled, it'd be hard to preach on resurrection. But if the spirit, if it's spirit-filled and Holy Ghost baptized, anytime I say revelation, you work no if I mean resurrection. If the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, you better stand up and help me hush this morning. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Oh, praise God. Well, everybody, just take somebody's hand. Everybody touch somebody by faith this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We praise you, Father, for this day. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. God, if there's a sick body in this house right now, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, let the healing power of God flow through this congregation right now. Let these joined hands become conduits, hallelujah, and contacts of the divine supernatural power of God right now. We pray for pain to leave. We pray for sicknesses to leave. We pray for diseases to leave. We pray in the name of Jesus for every soul and for every spirit that is in this house today. God, let the quickening power of the Holy Ghost come upon everybody that's been under the sound of my voice. I don't care if it's today or tomorrow or next week or next month. There's an appointed time for every man and woman in this house to come alive on the inside and to feel the Holy Ghost of God. Lord, release now the prophetic word and the prophetic seed that will bring this to pass. Amen. I call every person in this house in for the glory of God right now. My God, bless them, heal them, protect them, watch over them, put a covering on them, Lord. Pour the blood upon them today, God. We thank you right now for your resurrection power. I pray today that something said or sung or prophesied has lodged so deep that there will be nothing able to mine it out. That it'll speak in days to come. That it'll speak in years to come. God, birth a revelation. Birth a revelation in our spirit man today. We thank you for it. We praise you for it. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here. We love you so very, very much. Amen in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.